All right, hit it. It's not getting any quieter. Welcome back to Stay Tuned. I'm Tony Angelo. This is my YouTube channel. And we're going to be working on a really fun project that I bought forever ago, this 1970 Oldsmobile Cutlass. I got this thing in trade for this little S10 drag truck that I put together on HRG. I love that thing. And this thing's sort of just been sitting. It's unfinished. Um, Essentially, the kid I got the car from had bought it from somebody's widow. It was uh, this man's long-term project. He spent a bunch of time making it nice, but I guess never got it running and driving. It's pretty close, though. And after a couple videos back, I did like a tour of all my projects in our little bunker. Everyone was like, are you nuts? This cut list is so close. Thrash on it and do it. And they're right. It's time to resurrect this thing and see what it can do. So you can see this thing has sweet paint, uh, no real issues with the body. The one thing I was able to find out is it was painted at a trade school, but it paint looks killer. Uh, it's a, interior is really nice. There's no other information. Apparently this dude's wife wasn't into cars, didn't know anything about cars. I'm sure he probably told her, you know, everything costs one tenth of what it really did cost um, because that's the kind of relationship you want as an automotive enthusiast. But here's the deal on the car. It's got, a, it's got a 350 in it, you know, Oldsmobile 350 motor, year kind of unknown. We've ran the numbers. We think it's a later one that's like lowish compression. Uh, it's got headers on it. It's got an Edelbrock Performer RPM intake. It does have a drive shaft. It's got a shifter that seems to be hooked up. It's got a little HEI uh, distributor pack on there. And that's really it. It's very complete. Drums all around. Interior is almost all the way there and it came just chock full of parts. Uh, I don't the, like know a damn thing about Oldsmobile motors, uh, really. I know this is a 350. I don't think it's supposed to make a bunch of horsepower. Um, the dude definitely balled out on some sweet hardened intake manifold bolts. Uh, we're gonna pull the, in, the valve covers off, see if there's anything under there that looks suspicious. Maybe check the oil. Oh, the egg went off. Look at that thing. Yeah, look at that thing. Check the oil, see what's what. We don't know anything about the inside of this engine, but if you're trying to make some horsepower, you probably wouldn't put these heads on it. We've learned that these are number eight Oldsmobile heads on what we think is a 350. So, you know, I think 300 horsepower is probably outside the realms of possibility. I would set your standards a little lower. Than yeah. My standard, if it moves down the road yeah. and it has a cool rumble to it, I'll be thrilled. If it burns one tire, I'll be even happier. So we're looking at what looks to be brand new rockers, or at least very clean stock rockers. I see assembly lube on the top of the push rod. So this thing hasn't been fired up since, you know, whatever upgrades were done. Looks like the heads are very clean. Um, it's hard to tell exactly, but the block is much dirtier. So maybe it's got refreshed heads with a little bit of a cam in it. That would be best case scenario. I know it's not too wild. If you look in that spark plug hole right there, you can see a giant deep dish piston. And much like pizza, I don't like the deep dish. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, Chicagoans, but uh, we like to keep it flat out here. Maybe a dome would be nice. Never had a, never had a domed never pizza. Had a dome pizza but well, I'll try I it. Never met a pizza I didn't, you know, nobody I know, but Chicago cake pizza, get serious. Come on, people. It's nice. It's tasty. It's not pizza. All right, so this is Michael. Uh, inside the car is Denver. Uh, these dudes are here at the shop all the time helping out. Uh, they really help make this thing go. And today we're just going to be thrashing this car, so you're going to see them a bunch, maybe even hear from them. Uh, I'm going to do a fresh, a fresh, yeah, a fresh cheddar. That's a pizza. That's a decent frozen pizza, by the way. Yeah. Um, I'm going to toss in a fresh set of plugs because this thing came without plugs. Uh, I'm going to gap them to 40 thousandths because there's not going to be any cylinder pressure apparently. And these guys are just undoing uh, some kind of heater core removal. We're just going to get it sort of fastened down so we can hit the road with this thing. I will do the plugs. You do that. We'll check back in. Give it a little push, a little one. 
sound like you're, you're delivering a baby. <laughs> now one, one more big push. One, one more big push. That's it. It's a heater core. This thing came with, in the back, a ton of parts. Uh, these are the hood louvers, you know, grills for the top of the hood, headlights. Distributor, this cutlass book. Tons of emblems, small parts, a lot of good stuff in here. Yeah, nothing really like a ton of new parts, but definitely just about everything we need for the car, which is great. The more complete you can get it, the better. We were just gonna slap this thing together, but Denver decided he has to polish the valve covers. I like it. Nice and definitely like nine tenths of this bad. Yes, that's what they say. Possession is nine tenths of looking nice. Look at this, look at this thing. Shiny valve covers Ugh. one of them. These A-bodies are the best. This thing had like a 12 inch wide rear tire on it. Mm -hmm. It would look beast. All right, we're missing an alternator. I think we have one that looks like it may work. It's a little bit of guesswork kind of seeing what's what, what's missing, what's not. There's no dipstick tube for some reason. Uh, Trying to figure that out. Whoever put the headers on, forgot to bolt the power steering brace back on. We'll sort that out. But I think soon we'll be able to put some oil pressure to this thing and see what's up. Check for leaks. A little bit of thrash and we're able to find this original Olds alternator bracket in our pile of parts. That seems to be on there happy. Uh, I'm going to get the power steering done and then we're done with accessory more or less. I'm on the... Uh, Pull that distributor out and fill it full of oil and see if we can get some oil pumping out of these valve covers. I've got to do, yeah, so I'm going to pull this distributor out, put the oil filter on it, fill it full of oil, and I think we can spin that with a hex drive, like a socket on a drill, backwards apparently, and we'll see if we can find some oil pressure in this thing. That's what it said. I watched a YouTube about it. That's what people say? I YouTubed it. All right, Denver's putting in assorted pipe plugs. We've got AC on there. This is the flux capacitor down there. That's the hyperdrive. You got all that, Denver? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a learn, this is a teaching position. Hyperdrive's important. You need a hyperdrive. I need, a, I need an extension. That's great. Good work. I guess. Yeah, all right, so we're gonna set this thing at top dead center, pulling that one plug back out. We'll take the valve cover off. You wanna make sure it's on the compression stroke. Probably got the bad boy still just sitting here. So we have a piece of welding rod in the number one spark plug hole. I'm just gonna watch it raise up. Showing up now. Get a shot of that. Yep. Get all that stroke, son. It's moving. It's moving? Yeah, it's moving. Okay. There it goes. I might have been stuck. It did. Because I didn't see much move. I wasn't looking at it before. But... Oh, there it goes. It was not moving. Okay. The lifter might have been stuck up. Mm. So I was saying, let's spin it around and make sure everybody looks like they're moving. Down, down, try to find it. Coming up? Yep. Uh, Alright. Okay. Out. There. A little bit. Good? I think that's the top. Okay. Alright, so I think we're 180 out. You look at the rotor, if you had it dialed in right. You can stick your finger on the hole just to over the, you put your finger on the spark plug hole and see if you're actually making some compression on the way up. Ready? So that should be intake down, mm -hmm. right? Yep. 
and then it's going to close, and now you can be feeling the compression now. Yep. yep. All right, we're going to put the rod back in. Watch it come up. Up there? So that means the rotor's dialed in right, too. All right, I'm going to call that top dead, center, and things seem to have been freed up. We felt compression in the plug, ready to rock. Let's keep going. Ran out and got the Nava Gold, because that's really a Wix filter. These are about the best things you can get at a parts store that I've seen. One of my favorites. Nobody paid us to say that. Nava Gold equals Wix. Wix equals good. filter sits straight up so you can fill it up with oil to make sure it doesn't sit dry while you crank it. We're going to preload this thing anyway, but it's still going to get us get us going quicker. All right, I've got my essentials here. Sweet hammer, piece of wood, little map gas torch. Apply a little pressure, the heat, and move. Feeding up the inevitable here by roasting the paint off these headers. Here, but here I am. There it goes. That's the bear bell. That's gonna rub it up nice. All right. We'll fight back here. Move right out the way. be better. Yeah. That'll do. That's a good three sixteenths of an inch. Take that. Is this color going to be an issue with the heat? What? Nah. No? Be fine. It would, if it's tough, if it's touching it, it's going to heat it up. It's going to be a problem. Yeah. But there's going to be plenty of air running through there. It'll be fine. Okay, we're getting close to firing up this Oldsmobile. Hopefully, Michael's got the ignition leads all done. That's how British people say ignition wires. Uh, we don't have a carb sitting on there yet it came with a proper quadra jet which would have been the stock carb for this thing but it is pretty crispy and i don't think we're going to try to run that so we're gonna go back in the parts room and see what we've got laying around all right we got we got some stuff from some different projects there's our stash of carburetors I'm going to grab this Carter AFB. This came uh, in a box with my Monte Carlo when I bought it and a bunch of small block Chevy stuff. I don't know if it's ever been run. It looks pretty decent. It's a 625 CFM. It should be real good. You can use that manifold with a square bore carb or a spread bore. This thing should go up there nicely. All right, let's rock. Hey, quick break here just to announce that Stay Tuned finally has some merchandise. We've got the Angelo's Garage Gym shirt that just dropped. The new Stay Tuned Lightning Bolt shirt. Stickers, a couple other things. They're all available at this Shopify link. So give it a click. Um, thanks for supporting. Grab a shirt. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, back to the show. When you take these off, Try not to drop them in the intake manifold. Just careful. Yeah. It's like diffusing a bomb. 
Steady hands. Always cut the blue wire. All right, we've got the factory kick down. That's the TV cable. Ah, shizer. So if we change the studs to the other holes, it'll line up. About the gasket. Let's figure it out. Really, just have to do the one. I mean the one. There's two. Oh, is it? Are they both centered? Yeah. Will that work on the back land of the burger? That's what I'm wondering. Let's see. Yeah, I'd be happy. Sweet. Cool. Right. In our effort to not spend any money and build this out of stuff we got laying around in the parts room. I'm just trimming out this hole. So I'm gonna run, both the manifold and the carburetor are dual bolt pattern. So they're 4150 style and spread bore style. But this bracket's only gonna work spread bore style. So we're gonna move these rear studs in. Keep that gas that's gonna be fine. You like this? I'm gonna hang on to it a lot. Hell yeah. Pro tip, just blow it off where you put it on there. That helps. It's like an 80% success rate when you do that. All right, I've been trying to grow my hair long into a mullet for the Firebird, but it's so hot I'm wearing this bandana. I think it's totally gang neutral, so nobody come after me. Uh, we're cool with Holly and Edelbrock. We don't start any beef here, you know what I'm saying? Uh, also, I guess Carter today. We love everybody. All right, so we are going to just rig up a quick linkage here. That guy's nice and tight. So you can take a bolt, quarter 20, through the back here. Now you need two, you need two nuts. So I need a nut to hold this tight, and then I'll come back on with... This will be great, I think. I'll tell you in a minute when you hit the throttle. So if you need to... You can take a bolt through, toss a nut on the back side. All right, just tighten it all the way up. Make it tight. You on there? You got it? Yeah. And you come back here and put a nylock on it so that this thing can rotate pretty happily. This will get you down the road. Watcher. Now I gotta see how much. You really need a longer bolt, but that'll get us there. Longer? So we're getting close to trying to fire this thing up, but it has no electricity in here yet. Um, we got to add a, a ground cable. We've got to get the starter wire out of harm's way, hook up the starter exciter wire. Um, and then we're going to just throw a plug in the dipstick tube hole, and we will be ready to crank this thing. Uh, I noticed when we were working on this thing that the transmission has dual bolt patterns. BOP, Buick, Olds, and Pontiac have their own bolt pattern for transmission, and then Chevy has their own that they've used forever. Um, and there's only a couple transmissions that have both. The 204R, which is the best four-speed overdrive mechanical transmission, uh, has it. It's the transit comes in the Grand National. It's really a kick-ass transmission. It's got a great gear set. And some Turbo 350s were also dual bolt pattern, but it's pretty rare. So I wondered, I just assumed it was a 350, but I'm down here now looking at the pan, and this is a four-speed overdrive 204R trans, which is awesome, which means like, maybe this thing will be a highway cruiser, it's a better gear set, it's awesome to have a four-speed in here. Um, I guess this was swapped in at some point, it was, you know, this is a transmission from the 80s, so obviously it never came in here, but what a killer upgrade, awesome find, that makes me stoked. This thing could, you know, happily rip down the highway probably at 75, which is something, you know, three-speeds won't really do. So I love that, and that makes me stoked. It seems like, you know, it would. my guess is it would have to have a different drive shaft. I don't know what this is pieced together or if this was custom made a million years ago, so I'm a little bit worried about that, but awesome news, 204R. The best, the best of the best right there. So that, that's rad. 
All right, back to wiring and stuff I can't see or touch. I'm about to drop this starter down, wire it up, and put it back in, maybe. I can't even get my hand up in there. Starter's coming dead straight down. Oh, yeah. Or at least enough to get some something on there. Put your hand on it. All right, so there was like no contortionist maneuver I could have done to get to this lug. So all I'm going to do is I lowered the starter out. I can still barely get to it. Put this wire on it, tighten it up, and then I'm going to put it back up in where it goes. And obviously, this is rubber isolated, but when it's tightened up, you gotta make sure nothing's touching. If this was touching like this, it would ground right down. So I'm gonna tighten it up, and we'll see. Make sure it's happy and out of the way. It'd be really nice to have a rubber isolator over it, but, you know, if the government doesn't know, it won't hurt them. You know what I'm saying? I hear things happening. Yeah, me too. I don't see anything but my fat hands in there, but something's happening. Concentration phase, right? I know. I, yeah, at some point you just don't even bother trying to look because no. you know, can't see. Not happening. Can't see through your hands. Oh. This is the guitar solo phase. Right here. <clears throat> on there. Feeling good about that? I don't think it's going to start an instant fire. Just going to tweak it out. Okay. All right, good to sweet. Me. That's on. I wonder where the battery sits. It must need this, this, this length a little bit. I was going to say, let's lay the battery in place. But this is disgusting either way. I'm going to get rid of this. Wires out of the tray. There's a new lighting harness, front lighting harness with this I saw thing. That. Nice. Easy. Okay. We'll have to fix that uh, Rocky Rollies. Hold this. Okay. This goes here. Oh, I can just put a ring terminal on this for now, especially. All right, a little more goat juice. Some in the holes. A little splash in there. All right. Let's do this thing. Denver. Hit it. I'll take that. Woo! Woo! Hell yeah. It runs. It this runs. thing runs. I don't know if the cam is fresh, but like fired up. It runs. It sounds like the timing is in the ballpark. That's awesome. It sounds like a boat. I think we got maybe a little no cam to a little cam in there. No cam. Let's call it no, no cam. cam. No cam. It's fine. It sounds cool. It's loud. It's smelly. All right. Well, Hell yeah, let's do one more splash of gas, one more time. Let's start a fire in here. How does it feel to be in there? Are you reinvigorated or what? Do you like cars again? He does. All right. Hold on a sec, let me hear something. Okay, go ahead. Choke. I know, the choke sucks. Go ahead. Start? Yeah, give me a start. All right. Hold on, I might not have had power to the distributor, the coil. All right, hit it. Woo! Thing gets, gets louder every time. It's not getting any quieter. Hit it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All 
Alright, stop, stop. Yeah, I don't know if these bowls are getting full or what the deal is. I'll pour a little in here. Alright, give it one. Let's just let it here run up real quick. Oh yeah. She's all there. It runs. I'll take it. Sweet. Beautiful. All right, now we're going to do a bunch of other things and then try to get to run for more than five seconds. But that is a win. I'll right. take it. Nice work, gentlemen. Hell yeah. Didn't do the whole lot. But <laughs> turn, you turned the f out of that key. It was like, boom. All right. Um, so this radiator support should be spot welded together. This side has three spot welds on it very clearly. And this side was disconnected and moving up and down with a bolt hole drilled through it. Um, so we are just going to take two seconds drill through this one side of the radiator support and weld it so this thing is solid forever. Um, I don't know if there was like maybe a minor hit up front, um, but nothing too serious. The frame rails are very straight. Whenever these cars get hit, it's super easy to tell this part of the frame back there buckles um, and this doesn't have that, so all good stuff. Drilling through this side and then letting it clean up the other side. That is like essentially a butter knife. Let's try to find something sharp. That will do. I can see there, I'm into the other side. Nice weld there, we'll do it. Once I got a bit, it actually, that first little bit was, it was gonna like start a fire before it was gonna, oh, yeah. before it was gonna cut any metal. Felt like I was a like drilling a hole with a dowel. Yeah. Looks good. I got better with each one. It'll all work just fine. Beautiful. So we needed a radiator and fans for the Cutlass. Reached out to another cool local company. Hatfield, Pennsylvania has the guys at Cold Case Radiators. They sent us this sweet oversized dual core guy uh, with a set of 12 inch electric fans. This will go right in there. It will be the shiniest thing under the hood and should keep this thing cool. It's automatic, so we got the uh, integrated trans cooler set up. Just keeping it stock style for now. We're gonna drop it in. This thing actually looks very sweet. Do it. Blow on one end like a trumpet. Mm. Hell yeah. You should have put your fingers over the trans holes like a flute. <laughs> Boop, doop, scoop. Hold on. I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, yeah, fake it. No, just put it in there. Come on. Yeah, it's just bigger. We're just going to have to make a little adjustment there. We didn't have to go to the parts store four times to try and find We haven't been to the parts store yet, really, we right? Oil and spark plugs. Oil and spark plugs, that's it. This is this was in the car. Cold case sent us that. This was in the back room. These MSDs were in the back room. Hmm. Return spring. Return like spring came with this thing. Racket. Yeah, we're going. We're going. All right, so we found two upper radiator mounts. One that seems to have it like five inches away, and one that has it like two inches away. We're rolling with this one. We got this thing all sitting in here happy. And we should be good to go. I'm a little concerned about these trans lines, but we'll, once we get the lower hose on, we may be fine either way. They're just kind of a little bit out there in space. Let's we'll see what happens. All right, so we got the exhaust system most of the way done here. Tailpipes are in. Over the axle into the mufflers, X pipe, blah, blah, blah. So this kit is technically to be used for an LS setup and uh, it says it can be used with anything else with some slight modifications to that tube right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a little slip joint, you know, a piece that fits in there and clamp it 
and then on this end we're going to cut it and weld on a ball and socket flange uh, to finish this exhaust up. So we're going to get to that now. So in an effort to make some custom pipes between the X pipe up there and the collector on the header, we dug around the scrap bins and back room and we found these uh, you know, female end of the ball and socket flange. The problem is, is that this is for two and a half inch tubing and collectors. We really needed three inch for these collectors. So we just got really lucky and in the parts that came with this car, the guy had stashed away pretty much exactly what we called every place in this neighborhood to try and buy. Um, so we cut the pipe to size and we welded on a piece of tubing that would slide inside of the expanded tubing on the X pipe and then we welded this flange on and now we're gonna stick it back in the car and see how it goes in. All right, Michael in Denver got the exhaust all wrapped up. This is a hooker stainless two and a half inch kit that came with the car, so awesome. It looks killer, it seems to fit really well. I threw a nut on the trans mount so we can knock that off the list. It's really only a few things to get it pushed outside and fired up so we can kind of like, you know, maybe break the cam in and tune the carbs, see how it's going. Um, dipstick, finish wiring up the fans. Um, oh, and deal with the fuel system. So that's where we are. All right, so the goal for today is to get this thing outside running with a new exhaust on it, break that camshaft that may or may not be new in properly. So it's got to run for like 10 to 15 minutes at like 1800 RPMs. Get the timing dialed in, try to dial in this carburetor and, uh, you know, let it get up to temperature and see how it runs. If we can get that done, that would be a huge win. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that'd be it's sick. just a bunch of little stuff, but yeah, we're it's pretty been, much there. We are pretty much there. Go ahead. I think we're pretty much there. I mean, we put this little fuel cell in. Yeah, there's a couple little, little temporary, temporary measures. That's a little, yeah. a little gas tank there. We've got the alternator a little bit hot wired, but uh, it should be good. I'm excited yeah. to hear it with the exhaust on. Yeah, me too. All right, so I just kind of hot wired the alternator and this little fuel pump we have. It's like those big transfer pumps they say will support like 300 horsepower. It's just all very temporary. All we want to do is get it outside, let it run for a bit, see how it sounds, dial in the timing, and uh, get ready to drive this thing sooner than later. Yes, sir. This is already, I mean, reviving this thing, I'm really hearing it run, making it idle, letting it, you know, breaking that cam and hearing it with the exhaust on. I mean, that's like, gotta fire you that's up. That's awesome. I'm yeah. very stoked about it. Very stoked. This thing hasn't done anything in literally, I don't know how long, but too long. many years. So I feel good about it. Yeah. So here's our plan. We want to get this thing fired up and to break the camshaft and you hold it at 1500 RPM for 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever people say. Uh, you can rev it up a little higher than that. It's just to ensure that there's really good oil flow without stressing the hell out of the actual lobes of the cam, then you let it cool down, then you're in business. But while that's happening, I'm gonna be running around, making sure there's no leaks and that temperatures aren't going crazy. Check the gauges, check the oil pressure, all that stuff. It's really easy to like get something fired up, get ahead of yourself, rev the hell out of it, start acting like an idiot, wait 15 minutes, make sure there's no leaks, then act like an idiot. That's how the pros do it. Try it. What I do wanna do is obviously quickly dial in the timing and then I'll crank the idle up until yeah. we're happy that this thing is rumbling along smoothly. Oh, and it's the first time with the exhaust on, so let's see how it heats. How yeah. it'll look. I'm excited to hear it. Cars run on gasoline. There are leaves and old dust so much on this header. <laughs> We're gonna start a brush Plus fire. All that oil from when we pre-lubed it. Yeah. And burn off. How's it taste? Medium, medium rare. I like it. Yeah. Right, put that on one. Show that to the camera. Good. All right, the paint is exploding off these headers. Yeah, I don't want to breathe that, do you? No 
I want to get it up, though. I want to get the revs up. <laughs> Hold it there. I'm going to check the temps. Oil pressure is like rock solid, 50. We tossed in some parts store gauges. Oil pressure is rock solid at 50. Temp is climbing. Slow though, so we'll keep an eye on it. I think the fans are set to come on at 190, so let's see how it goes. Moving up quick. All right, so it's all covered in old oil and leaves and stuff. Very smoky. Hopefully no real issues, but this is a little bit to be expected. Sounds great, though. It does. Thing in right. All right. All right. Call that good enough. Okay. Let's do a camshaft check out back. <laughs> no real. Sounds, wah, like a, sounds like a wah. boat, dog. There is no chop to be found. What's the chop rating on this? Chop rating on this. If you let the fuel pump turn off, it gets a little chop right before it stalls. So, okay. one out of 10. One out it's of all right. We didn't build this thing. We're just happy to hear it running. Yeah, hell yeah. Sounds pretty damn Sounds good. Sounds pretty damn good. I like it. I'll take it. Hey, we do some science on here. Yeah. Yep. What's that mini wrench? Boy, it's hot. Good. Let's see what it looks like. Fuel yeah. pump. Hit that pump. Um, got the camera here. I'll cut it off for a sec. You good? Too far. What are you at? As evidence, 15 maybe. Off the end of the thing. I'll bump it back a little bit. Be you good. were putting the hot tin up in it or what? Just trying to get a little wild with this very mild engine. That's back to about seven. All right, that's 10. All right, kill it. That's 10, I'm gonna leave it there. Yeah. I wish I could take this thing down the road right now and raise a little bit of hell with it, but uh, the wheel cylinders are all stuck and we cut one of the brake lines, brake hoses to get it on the trailer. Uh, so we gotta, we're gonna tear into this thing 
and next week when our video comes out the goal is to have this thing up running throw some lights in it and be just tearing down the road i might even put a license plate on it and register this thing it might be great we might go that crazy with it anyway that's it for this episode of stay tuned we will see you guys next time peace <laughs>